Hello everybody, welcome back to the funny old game video thingy edition. Um, as explained in the first video, uh, in the A-League video, this is basically a catch-up of the fact we've not been on air for the last couple of weeks. Uh, right, so, Premier League preview time, and uh, Michael Loudrup, manager of Swansea City, has said that Tottenham, uh, Swansea's opponents in this next round of the Premier League, could suffer from international football's FIFA virus in Saturday's Premier League meeting. Now, by that, uh, Loudrup doesn't mean that all the Tottenham players have been too busy on excellent uh, football simulation video games, like certain people, uh, but what they actually could be suffering is tiredness from their exertions during the international break. We'll be looking at, back on the international break uh, in one of the subsequent parts. Uh, Loudrup reckons that this is a good opportunity for any teams who are taking on the big sides to get some points. So let's have a look at who the top teams are playing. In the lunchtime kickoff, we've got Sunderland who are in action against Manchester United. United being the the big team in this one. Uh, United currently 15 points clear at the top of the Premier League with nine games to go and looking like they're going to win the Premier League title for, uh, well, the 20th time all up, including the old Football League as well. Sunderland, on the other hand, are 15th on 31 points, four points clear of the drop zone. However, that team they're clear of, Wigan Athletic, have a game in hand, so potentially they are one point clear of the team that would then fall into the drop zone, which would be Aston Villa. So, Sunderland badly need a win. And you know what, I reckon Mickey Loudrup's onto something here. Uh, well, at the very least in this game, this might be a good weekend to put a bit of money, if you're off the gambling persuasion, on teams that are uh, less favoured in some of these big clashes. I particularly think that this game might be one to look at. Uh, despite the fact that Sunderland have just lost Stephen Fletcher for the rest of the season, he's their top goal scorer. They do have January signing Danny Graham who can step into the fold. Uh, this is going to be a very, very uh, key game for them. They're at home. Uh, Sunderland do have a good home record against some of the big teams, particularly if they're called Manchester City. So just pretend it's City that are coming to town. They should be fine. But you've also got to look at the fact that United are not going to be complacent, you'd argue, but it potentially could creep in. Uh, you've also got to look at the fact that more of their players were involved in the international fixtures, and also the fact that in 48 hours after the game, uh, Manchester United are in action in an FA Cup quarter-final replay against Chelsea, so no doubt Ferguson will have switched around a few players with that game in mind. So Sunderland could be playing a potentially weakened, complacent, tired Manchester United team. You'd still say United are favourites, even with all those um, caveats, but I wouldn't be too surprised to see Sunderland get a draw out of this one. Uh, I think this is a very good time for them to be playing United, and I think Martin O'Neill will certainly have his players G'd up for the test. Elsewhere in town, uh, other big boys, uh, Arsenal, yes, they still are, are taking on Reading at home. Reading, of course, who've got Nigel Adkins in, they've got that uh, new manager smell, new managers normally do get half-decent results, it'll be interesting to see what he can do to try and inspire them to climb out the relegation zone. Joint bottom with Queen's Park Rangers on 23 points and a minus 22 goal difference. Reading need to start winning, and where better to go than the Emirates? Well, a lot of places, actually. Uh, however, Arsenal have been rocked by the news that uh, Abu Dhabi is injured. I thought he was injured. No, but seriously injured. Sadly, Diaby is out for nine months. Uh, yeah, it's not known if he's going to be uh, giving birth at the end of the period. It is, in fact, a rather serious injury that's going to keep him out, which is a big shame for Diaby because there is a talented footballer in there somewhere amongst all the plasters and bandages. Uh, Arsenal, though, you would expect to win this game, even with Adkins in there trying to get uh, Reading to stay up. Uh, likewise, Newcastle might fancy their chances up against Manchester City. Uh, Roberto Mancini has uh, said that the Premier League title race is over and that City definitely aren't going to win it. But they need to keep picking up points because they've got those pesky London clubs, Tottenham and Chelsea, chasing them down for second spot in the league. Uh, they can't afford to be too complacent, he said, so he will be expecting three points against this admittedly half-decent Newcastle side. Newcastle may only be 13th in the league, but don't let that fool you. They have put in some good performances against big teams in Europe, in the uh, Europa League, and potentially, you know, they might just uh, fancy themselves with, you know, considering that all their players are French and not all of them play for the French national team, so, you know, they should be fresher than City's players. Meanwhile, Chelsea 
also involved uh, in the FA Cup quarterfinal replay of Manchester United, are away at Southampton. And this is definitely a potential banana skin for them. Uh, Pochettino's men currently sit uh, four points clear of the relegation zone, a la Sunderland, and also, you know, they've got the fact that really Wigan do the catch-up game. Uh, they could potentially see themselves getting a result. After all, they beat Manchester City. They were unlucky not to get anything out of their trip to Old Trafford. And, you know, this is a side that are playing relatively well, despite their lowly league position. Chelsea, on the other hand, will probably rotate. They have players involved in internationals, and much like the Sunderland United game, I could see this one ending in a draw, with Southampton picking up, you know, a much-needed home point. Swansea, as we mentioned before, in action against Tottenham. The Swans, not involved in a rele relegation battle, and regardless of what happens this weekend, will remain in ninth spot, as they're four points clear of 10th place Fulham, but four points behind 8th place West Brom. However, they'll be hoping to be a little closer to that top eight with victory over Spurs. As for Spurs, as things stand, 54 points where they are at the moment, and they have played a game more than all the teams around them. Chelsea have 55 points, Manchester City have 59, and Arsenal have 50. If all those teams win their game in hand, Arsenal will be a point behind Spurs, and Spurs themselves will be four points behind Chelsea, so it's important that they do win this game. And of course they've got Super Gareth Bale, who they'll be hoping is fit to play. Reportedly, he should be OK, despite picking up a knock on his international duties with the Welsh national team. West Ham, who've uh, just decided to move home in a couple of years' time, uh, will be in action against West Brom in the West Team Derby. Uh, West Ham, as things stand, will basically now be focusing on trying to stay a Premier League side until they move into the Olympic Stadium. Otherwise, it could be a very big, very empty Championship Stadium. Uh, as it stands, the Hammers are currently 14th on 33 points, six clear of the drop. But again, if we can win that game in hand, only three clear, so they need to be careful. However, under Big Sam, I think they will stay up. And even though they're taking on a West, West, West Brom side, they currently sit eighth and uh, look pretty comfortable there. I could see the Hammers getting themselves a win in this game. Uh, I just think they've got the bit between their teeth. A couple of wins here in, at this point in the season, and they can relax and look forward to uh, some Olympic glory under uh, Chairman David Gold. Funnily enough, uh, Wigan, as we mentioned, are in action against Norwich. This is not their game in hand, of course. That's coming up later uh, in the season. But they'll be playing a Norwich side who've done very well to pull themselves away from the relegation scrap. However, a win for Wigan in this game, and then win that other game in hand, they could be within a point of the Canaries. So, you know, all to fight for there, of course, for Norwich, who recently signed uh, Ricky Van Wolfswinkle, or at least... They haven't officially signed him, but it will be as good as done when the transfer window opens. All the paperwork is ready to be faxed off on the 1st of July. Uh, yeah, Norwich, uh, well, they'll be hoping for a victory. And maybe this will see a couple of the strikers try and perform a bit better than they have been, particularly old one-goal Grant Holt. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. The late kickoff sees Everton against Stoke with uh, two sides playing each other with managers who fa the fans are starting to grumble a bit about a lack of success, despite the fact they've been very stable where they are for the last five years in Stoke's case and ten in Everton's. The weekend concludes with a Sunday night game between Aston Villa and Liverpool. Aston Villa, who currently sits 17th and uh, could potentially have fallen into the relegation zone, depending on what happens in the Wigan-Norwich match, will be hoping for a win. But they're taking on a Liverpool side, which apparently are now very, very good with the signing of one Felipe Coutinho. Indeed, Liverpool are 7th, and it's not entirely unfeasible that they themselves could make it into the Champions League. It's unlikely, and indeed Europa League may be more where they're aiming for. A victory here could see them potentially overtake Everton if they lose to Stoke. And on Monday night, there's the small matter of a West London derby between Fulham and QPR. Fulham, pretty safe, not going to go up or down, particularly under Martin Yole, it looks like. I mean, that's at the army, nine points clear of the relegation zone, and if Wigan win six. But they're up against Harry's boys, QPR, who desperately need the win. And I don't think they're going to get it. I think Fulham will win this one. And that could be the beginning of the end for Rangers. Mm. We shall see. Anyway, uh, join me in the next video when we'll be talking international football and maybe just look ahead to that FA Cup tie between United and Chelsea. Stay tuned.